What's up guys, Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out six new tools that just got added to the extension sketch plus for SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So as a lot of you know, sketch plus is a tool set from Mindsight studios that adds additional tools to SketchUp. So it's got a lot of really interesting functions all the way from selection tools, um, a lot of which are improved from what's built into SketchUp itself, all the way through tools for doing like random rotation. And we've got some really cool tools that were just added for adjusting and changing things inside of your model um, using deep selections. It also has some material tools that I use a lot. So things like deep paint faces, which allows me to click on an object and paint a face no matter if it's uh, nested inside of a group or not, as well as the untag or unpaint tools where you can remove materials. Uh, if you do want to check it out, I'll link to Sketch Plus in the notes down below. Um, note that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you purchase through that link. Oh, and one other thing I want to point out is currently the subscription for Sketch Plus is on sale. Um, it's usually $30 a year. In this case, it's 50% off um, for $15 a year. You can also get a lifetime license right here if you do want to do that. But if you are interested in this tool set, um, you can get that at a discount right now. I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last. So uh, definitely worth checking out if you have been interested in this tool. But in today's video, we're going to check out some of the new features that were added inside of this version of Sketch Plus. So first off, and the one I'm probably the most excited about is one called Deep Stretch. And so what Deep Stretch does is it allows you to select portions of objects and actually stretch them out inside of SketchUp. And so like, say for example, you had this cabinet and I've got this cabinet set up where it's got kind of a sidewall here. And then these are kind of grouped inside of the object right here. So if I wanted to resize it, right, I'd have to click in here and make a whole bunch of adjustments in order to do that. Like even if I have these set up as components, which I don't, it's just kind of painful to make all that happen, right? And then my cabinet doors are all separate as well. And so making that adjustment um, would be a lot of work. Well, in this case, what this will do is this will actually go inside of the group. When you select deep stretch, you can just click and drag across an object like this, and then you could just stretch the object this way. So what that does is that allows you to type in a value um, or click on a distance or click in order to set this. And I'm going to go ahead and type in a value of 12 inches right here, but that allows me to move that 12 inches in that direction. And so one of the cool things about this is you can take this and you have to be a little bit careful, right? You don't want to stretch the object this way or this way. You can tap the arrow keys in order to lock that. So in this case, if I select this whole thing and I lock it and then I move it up and down. Now, if I type in a value, so say we move this up six inches right here, it's going to move in that direct up to down direction right there. And so that's really helpful for resizing objects without you having to remodel them, which can be a whole lot of additional work. So for example, if I wanted to resize this window, what I could do is I could select it right here and I'm just going to stretch it 12 inches this way. Then I'm also going to activate the tool, select it, and then we're going to stretch the object 12 inches this way. So now I have a deeper or now I have a wider interior window on the inside right here. And so this is a fast, easy way to resize things in your models. Now you want to be a little bit careful. Like let's say for example, I was to activate this tool like this right here. Notice how I accidentally picked up my walls. And so when I picked up my walls, it's kind of resizing this whole model and that's not what I want. If you go into an object, right? So I've double clicked in here. Um, so let's say that we go into this object right here. Notice how now if I do that, it's only going to pick up stuff inside of this current context, right? So anything outside of the group that I have selected will not be selected, but anything inside of the group will be. So what I could do then is I could just pick this whole thing up. I'm going to pick up, I want to pick up this whole rail. We're going to go ahead and move this over and I could go ahead and tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. And I could just pick this point right here. So super valuable for stretching instances that have nested groups and components inside of them. Right, so next up, we've got a tool that I really like because it's a lightweight scattering tool. It's called Sprinkle. And by the way, um, if you activate any of these tools and you look at the instructor 
over here, the instructor is going to give you instructions on what to do. So any of these tools that you select, like the deep stretch or um, any of the other new functions that we have in here, it'll give you instructions when you select the tool. But basically the way Sprinkle works is you select a surface like this. In this case, I've selected two. You activate it, and then you mouse over an object. Now, notice when I mouse over an object, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a little preview in here of the object and how it's going to be placed on that surface. So what it's going to do is it's going to randomly place objects on the surface. Now note there's an option down below that says control equals align with the global up axis. So if I tap control, notice how now these objects are going to be straight up and down as opposed to aligned to the surface. And that's going to vary depending on what you want to do in an area. But you can also either type in a value or tap the up or down arrow keys to adjust how much these objects are going to be scattered on a surface, just like this. So if I click, notice how it's going to place all of these trees in here like this. And then the next time I do that, notice how it's going to pick a new location on the surface. So it's picking new locations every time that we do that so that we don't have to do the same thing over and over again. Now I'm going to undo this because this got a little bit heavy, but now, because you have Sketch Plus, what you can do is you can also select other trees in here like this, or I might just right click and do a select all instances in order to pick them all up. Maybe I won't select this one, but notice how this also has built in random spin and random scale tools. So I could click in here in order to set a random spin, and then I could click on this one then click in my model in order to do a random scale of those trees as well. So you can use the built-in tool set here to scatter as well as rotate and scale. And say that you did want to scatter on a surface like this one, you could just select it. And in this case, I'm going to tap the control key so that this is aligning with the surface. And notice how it's actually aligning it with the actual surface piece that this is over, right? So in this case, Right, if I do this, it's randomly placing this on this surface and it's just randomly picking points on that surface in order to scatter this like this. So that is going to effectively scatter it so that it covers most of this sphere right here. Definitely a powerful but also simple tool for a randomly placing objects on surfaces. All right, so next up, we've got a couple improvements to their camera functions. So the first is a tool called Walk Plus. And what Walk Plus does is it's kind of like the walk around tool um, that you can find in the large tool set. But with that one, you have to kind of like click and drag, right? And clicking and dragging is not always the most ideal way to move around inside of a model. Um, it's a little bit clunky, right? Like getting around things can be a little bit hard with the collisions turned on. So what Walk Plus does is instead, it allows you to do something kind of similar where you activate the tool and you can click in order to move around, but you use the arrow keys in order to move left right, forward, and back like this. So it gives you the ability to use the arrow keys to move around. Now, if you tap the Alt key, because notice this is jumping around in here because there's not actually a ton of space inside of this model, you can tap the Alt key. And when you tap the Alt key, what that's going to do is that's going to turn off, that's going to turn off collisions right here with anything other than the floor, meaning you can move around and kind of move through the walls um, just like this. So now the only thing you have to be a little bit careful about here is if you do walk up to something like a table, it's going to kind of jump you up. It recognizes any horizontal surface in here as a floor. So it will kind of jump you around a little bit, but this is, I think, a little bit better than the uh, walk around tool right here. The only thing I wish is I wish this used the W, A, S, and D keys instead of the arrow keys. Um, so that's a little bit clunky, but it's still a better way to move around your interiors than using the uh, walk function that's built into SketchUp. Now we do have another camera tool, which is the spin view tool. And so the spin tool is definitely kind of a niche tool, but what it's good for is it's good for selections, right? So like, for example, say you wanted to come in here and just pick up this top edge or something like that, or say you had a more complex shape. What you can do is you can just bring the spin tool in and you just click and drag to spin this and you would just kind of align it this way. But now it's really easy to come in here and drag a box around that selection. So same thing if you needed to pick up some of these weird walls or something like that on this object. So what you could do is you could just spin it this way or this way, 
And then now dragging a box across just that selection or that object is a lot easier right here. So that's usually what you're going to use that for. By the way, if you're ever in a 3D view and you get kind of off like this, if you just activate the orbit tool, it'll just drop you back into a straight up and down view like this. And then finally, there's a tool that I probably wouldn't use because it doesn't fit in my workflow, but I've actually had multiple people ask me for a tool like this. It's called um, Favorite Views. And what it does is it allows you to save a view that'll persist across different SketchUp models. So say you had multiple different SketchUp models, like say you were working with different options on this model or something like that, and you were saving multiple models, but they were all in the same 3D location. What you can do is you can save a view so like, for example, I could call this outside right here and then say that I had another view and we'll call it, whoops, we'll call it kitchen. So we can save a view right here and we can call it kitchen. Um, and then you could add as many views as you wanted to. So say we added a third and we called it living room. Um, and we'll get down below these lights and we'll just call this living room. So what you've done is you've saved that in this model right here. Well, then if you were to open this up in another SketchUp file, what you can do is you can pick these views, right? And then you can click on load. So if you were to open this up in another model, you could save the same views um, for multiple different models and load them across those different models. Um, and obviously like you can rename, you know, so if you wanted to call this outside one, or whatever, you can rename these, but you can use this in order to save and load across different models. Um, so if that is something you've been looking for, um, that's definitely a powerful tool. I don't usually work with my models that way, so it's probably not something I'm gonna be using, but overall very cool tool set. And then that's in addition to the other tools that are contained inside of Sketch Plus. So like for example, one of the ones that I use a lot is let's say that we were to want to replace this metal panel right here. Well, right now this metal panel, I have to click in here in order to make that change. But say that I wanted to pick something like, we'll just go with this gold color right here. Well, what we've got is we've got the ability to do a deep paint faces. And so when we do a deep paint faces, what that's going to do, and let's pick a color that's a little more visible. Um, so we'll go with this one right here, but notice how that allows me to actually paint the faces themselves without going inside of the groups. So we've got functions like that one. We've also got functions to do things like removing materials. So um, you could select multiple different objects and remove materials from them like this. So if I click in here, it's going to remove all the materials, or you can also unpaint faces and edges, or you can unpaint groups and components, right? In order to remove paint from groups and components, you've got functions in there for that. There's a ton of other functions inside of Sketch Plus too. I'll link to a video about it in the notes down below. All right, so leave a comment down below. Let me know if you might be using these new features, if there's something in here that you're super interested in. I just love having that conversation with you guys. Remember that Sketch Plus is currently on sale. I'm not sure how long that sale is gonna last. So if you are interested in this, this might be a good time to check that out. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.